Over the past five years, I've helped over a hundred companies create their logo, showcase their brand to their target demographic appropriately and captivate them. And now the process has drastically changed. I'm going to show you how in a couple of minutes using artificial intelligence, you can create a professional grade logo for your business or for somebody else. So we're going to cover how to create logos in mid journey. And I am going to teach you the step-by-step -step process of how to edit the text in Photoshop. And then we're going to get really professional and vectorize the logo either using Adobe Illustrator or Vectorize AI. Strap yourselves in, get ready, because we are about to create some really gnarly logos. Let's go. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is get acquainted with a lot of different types of logo designs so that you know how to prompt Midjourney AI so that it could create exactly what you're looking for. Now, I found this great, easy to read blog article that summarizes it pretty well. The types of logos it covers is combination mark logos, word mark logos. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that Midjourney is terrible with text, which we'll see later. And so what you really wanna do is focus on the icon or the emblem and then add Add the text later or even remove some text that Midjourney is going to recommend and then go ahead and type in your own and I'll show you how to do that and I like to use Photoshop and then I vectorize it with Vectorize AI or Adobe Illustrator and I'll show you how to do just that but as you can see here there's a lot of different types of logos and something really cool that I found here is there's negative space logos, which basically use the space in between the visuals to go ahead and portray a feel or a symbol of some sort. Like take a look here. This is actually really interesting that FedEx has an arrow pointing right in between the E and the X. But I digress. Let's jump into mid journey and start creating. Okay, so sometimes you can get lucky and just type in basic stuff and Midjourney will produce exactly what you are looking for. However, it's always helpful to add those relevant tags and that's done with comma space in between. So always remember you have to type in forward slash imagine and then you type in your prompt. So the first prompt I gave it was acupuncture logo, modern design, vector, minimalist. And it produced this. And I actually like this second visual here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna up scale the second image and once I have the image upscaled what I can do is I can open it in my browser I can go ahead and I could save this image and then I simply open it up in Photoshop and I add the text next to it now how did I get this name AccuSoul Wellness well I actually use ChatGPT so very simply, I just said, can you give me some name ideas for an acupuncture medical office? And it said, certainly, here's some ideas. And the one that I liked most was AccuSoul Wellness Clinic, but I just kept it AccuSoul Wellness. So just to quickly show you guys, most of the time people use logos these days predominantly as social media profile photos and also on their websites. And for this, you actually don't need a vector file. However, many people, if you're using your logo for something professional, like to blow it up on a poster or use it for something large, you will need it to be vectorized. But many times, even when a logo is vectorized, it goes back to a JPEG or PNG so that people can create a website with it. So if I go ahead and I zoom in on my logo, you can see that the edges are not sharp here. And that is what vectorizing a logo is gonna help us do. And I will show you two options. It will be Adobe Illustrator, and I'm gonna show you how to do it on Vectorize AI. And here's some more examples of prompts that I gave. So I said surfing logo, vector, vibrant. I liked number three best, and so I created variations of number three. Then I asked for 3D printing logo vector. I also created some boxing logo vector images. And then I went ahead and I created female boxing logo. And in this example, I wanna point out that you can actually look up some popular famous logo artists and you can make something in the style of that artist. So for instance, for me, that is Segi Haviv. And so I prompted Mid Journey to create a female boxing logo, comma, space, Segi Haviv, comma space vector and this is what it came up with i love these so i actually went ahead i love this first variation i gave and i created a logo with it so i went in here and all i did is i added some text that i thought would go along nicely with the image and as you can see here this is totally something that a company would pay for how did i get the name goddess gloves boxing 
easy. I just asked ChatGPT, hey, can you give me some ideas for names of a female boxing gym? And it produced 20 amazing names. And I love Golden Gloves Boxing, so I thought that God is Glove Boxing is a great play on that. And so I created this. I could totally see this being a logo that I can actually sell to a boxing gym that is catering to female clientele. And one thing I actually really like about this logo is that the woman here, you can't tell what ethnicity she is or anything like that. And that's always helpful because you want to be very inclusive when you create logos so that you can hit a lot of different target demographics. And so this logo is actually pretty professional. And I do feel like I can go ahead and sell this successfully to a female boxing gym. It took me minutes to create this. Now here I want to show you guys something helpful. I put the prompt in motorcycle store logo emblem detailed vector. And as you can see, it produced a lot of stuff with skulls, but I don't want skulls. And there is a parameter that is very helpful to use with logo design, which is the no parameter. So how do you do that? Well, I typed in the same exact prompt, forward slash imagine motorcycle store logo, comma space emblem, comma space detailed, comma space vector. Then I use the parameter dash dash no space skull. And what that tells me journey is create a grid for me that does not showcase skulls in it. And that's exactly what it did. And I like these a lot better. And so finally, I want to show you guys this. So I asked for a barbershop logo, comma space detailed, comma space flat, comma space vector. And the one that I like most out of here is the fourth one. So I'll go ahead and I'll upscale it. So now that it's upscaled, I'm going to open it in the browser and I will save this image. And as you can see, it does not do a good job with wording. Even if you give it the exact name and say, include this in the logo creation, it's not going to do a good job for you. So we'll always have to adjust this for me personally. I love to work with Photoshop. So I'll show you guys how to do just that. Okay, so there's a few different methods that I like to use in order to remove text from logos that were generated by Midjourney AI. One of them is simply the brush tool. What do I do? Well, I set the color to be the background color. I will make sure that the hardness is set to 100 and I will also ensure that it is set to normal. And then what I simply do is I just go over carefully with the brush until all of the text is removed. And now I'll show you a different method that I'll use for the bottom portion of the text that's actually a little bit more precise because we can't always fit the brush in. So for the smaller text on the bottom, I'm actually gonna go ahead and use the pen tool. And so now that I've made my selection, I will right click and I will say make selection. I'll make sure that the radius is zero. I'll click OK. And now here there's a shortcut shift F5 and we'll be able to choose which color we want in there. So we'll choose the color black. And as you can see, voila, for this bottom portion here, we can go back to the brush tool because it's going to be really easy. We simply click once and then shift click again when we drag it all the way to the other side and voila, it's removed. And now we could put in the name. Now, what name are we going to put in? Let's use ChatGPT once more. So here I asked ChatGPT to give me some name ideas for a barbershop in New York City. And I think I like this one best, Gotham Groomers. I actually love it. So let's say I want for it to be a franchise. So I'll type in New York City for the location of this first location of Gotham Groomers. I'll go ahead and center it. I'll select the check mark. And now I'm going to show you something very cool in Photoshop, and then we'll dive right back into the AI stuff. So in this section here, I wanted to say promo ambitions. I'm going to show you how to curve the text. So I'm going to choose the font size up here. I made it 70 because when I think it's curved, it's going to almost fit, but I can always correct that. I'll hit the check mark. And now what I'll do is I'll go over here. I'll do control T and you see this right here. This you can switch between free transform and warp modes. We're going to go ahead and click that. And then as you can see up here in the bend, I can actually just drag it or I can input an actual figure. So let's make this 16. I'll go back to make it a little bit smaller and now fit it in there perfectly. And now lastly, up top here, I'll go ahead and name that Gotham Groomers. So now I'll increase the text to be 90 points so that when I curve it, it'll be somewhat in line and I could always tweak that later. Now I'll show you a different way to do it. So in my panel section, I can make sure Gotham Groomers is selected. I'll go ahead. I will click this icon here, which is to warp the text. I want to create an arch and I can actually dictate how much of an arch I wish to create. 
I like the way it's looking, but I want to go ahead and warp it a little bit more. So we're just going to give it more of a bend. I'll hit the check mark. And so here we go, a Gotham Groomers logo. And obviously, if I wanted to make it look a little more professional, I would probably choose better text. I would align it better. I would give it more height so that it fits into this area more perfectly. And now if I wanted to vectorize it, I would use Adobe Illustrator normally. However, Adobe Illustrator can be quite advanced to use. And if you know how to use Adobe Illustrator, definitely go ahead and vectorize it there. And to give you a hint, I will use one of the latest logos that I've created with the help of the logo designer that's in my company, Miss Diana Blau. I appreciate you a lot. And if you take a look here, if you zoom in, you'll see that the letters, once you zoom in, the edges are all jagged. This is typically because it's a JPEG or PNG file which is totally fine because that's what you'll be working with when you go ahead and make a profile photo on Instagram or Facebook or when you go ahead and create website which again is what most of these logos are used for however if you want to vectorize it you can select the actual logo then you go to object you click down here in image trace and you click make and you'll see that now it vectorized it. However, the properties are not exactly what I want it to be because it got rid of some colors. And I can always adjust that here. So I could choose three colors. And now you'll see that if we hit Z and we zoom in, this is more of a vector. The edges are not jagged as they were in the other example. Another way to do this, and sometimes it works even better, is with an AI tool called Vectorize AI. For this, simply search for Vectorize AI and I will include the link in the description. And for now, this is a free tool and it's really, really amazing. So if you see here, if I go ahead and I upload that same exact logo image we were working with, all we have to do is just download the vectorized result. Take a look at this. This was the original image. It looks like trash. However, if you zoom in here, the edges are perfect. And this is vector art. Again, why do you need a vectorized result? Well, maybe you want to blow up your company and put it on a billboard or a blimp or a product that's going to be big and you just don't have enough pixels in the original image. And so here, all you would do is you could click download and you could choose the file format and you could see a lot of different parameters that you could select out of here, go ahead and download and then use it for your project. And before I wrap up, I want to show you guys a really, really neat trick. There's a color pick eyedropper that's an extension of Google Chrome. And from here, it's really easy to work on logos because, for instance, I could simply click it and select any color. So for this logo that I created, I can select it. And then if I go back to Photoshop and I actually want to make the text that color, I can go ahead and do that. So for instance, I could select this text and I could go ahead and paste in that color. And that is going to create a logo that mimics something that the AI robot created as far as color scheme goes. And sometimes that could look really, really nice, especially when you tweak certain colors, you play with the color scheme. So for instance, New York City, we can choose a different color that we used in the logo already. And as you can see, it gives it a nice feel and it works cohesively with the logo. So I'm actually really, really happy with the way this came out. I really hope you guys learned something. This took me a really long time to make. So if you appreciate it, just leave a comment, share it with a friend, give it a like, it helps spread it in the algorithm. I'm going to cover as many AIs as I possibly can in my free time and put out tutorials so that we can learn together so that we could be more efficient with our art process, with our design process, and hopefully that reflects very nicely in the bottom line. I appreciate you guys greatly. I will see you all in the next video.